Welcome to a new installment of Wood Gas Stove Science. In this video, I'm going to look at optimizing a paint can uh, wood gas stove, one that is made out of a quart paint can that you can purchase from Lowe's. What I did to prepare for this um, was I went online and I looked up um, a few different videos on paint can uh, wood gas stoves and you can see there's some issues with the paint can wood gas stoves uh, where they kind of burn with a dark orange flame uh, which means they're not burning really super efficient and the ones that they make currently uh, have an open bottom on them and you can see that center picture uh, had a burn mark um, which can happen when you're out in the wilderness also and you can have a serious problem. The idea for this video was uh, mentioned by a couple of the subscribers and uh, they were mentioned a couple times in the comments. Uh, so I thought this was a really good idea to uh, do a video on optimization of this type of um, wood gas stove because it is extremely easy to build. Once I sat down and started looking at the paint can and started looking at other cans that I could use to build this, um, I noticed one thing pretty quickly. A standard size like chili can or standard size like Campbell soup can uh, is far too small uh, diameter wise uh, because what you want is you want as little room between the outside wall and the inside wall uh, so it superheats the air as it travels up the side uh, between the two cans. At that point, I decided I would go and move on to the progressive soup can. Um, so that is the can that most people on the internet will use is a progresso um, soup. Uh, and that is because it actually, the mouth of the progressive progresso soup will actually snap right into the ridge around the top of the uh, quart paint can. So this is where my uh, optimized design is going to start to diverge uh, from what you normally see with a paint can stove. Uh, I'm going to remove the top of the can instead of the bottom of the can. Uh, the bottom of the can um, is really important for a heat shield. So the bottom of the can doesn't get so hot that you start to scorch things. Uh, and that's a problem. So in order to cut the top off my paint can, uh, I won't be using a regular can opener. I'll be using what is called a safety can opener. Uh, that safety can opener will split that up, upper rim uh, right around the center, like I'm showing on in the video, uh, and it won't just cut the center out like a normal can opener will do. Uh, so here is a safety can opener. Now again, I'm removing the top of this can uh, to keep the bottom of the can uh, intact so it can be a very effective heat shield uh, and the other thing is I'm removing the top uh, just so it will be easier for us to uh, change some of the parameters on the can um, if we can actually get to the can. In this view you can see that that safety can opener does a very very effective job of splitting that upper ring and when the cover comes off uh, it leaves a very smooth uh, not sharp edge. Another very nice part about using this type of can opener is that the cover actually can pop right back on. So now that I have the cover removed, um, it's time to trial fit that Progresso uh, soup can. Uh, now, as advertised in all of the other videos, that Progresso soup can does push into that cover very nicely. Uh, and it, it really does cause enough friction that it'll stay there. Uh, which is fantastic. But unfortunately, um, when I started looking at the way the Progresso soup can fits, it actually is too long and there's really a very, very minimal space underneath that can um, to the bottom of the paint can. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about the airflow underneath the, the Progresso um, soup can. So my next um, alternative is to use that um, uh, enchilada can and fits a lot tighter um, for whatever reason, but it seems to fit a lot tighter. And it gives me about an eighth inch more uh, air gap on the bottom. And it's a little bit weird because the Progresso can um, and the, the uh, enchilada can, they're both 19 ounces. The Progresso uh, can has a formed um, bottom and not a rolled uh, bottom lid and the enchilada sauce has a rolled bottom lid so that must be the difference between them. At this point I've decided to use the enchilada can uh, because 
Uh, it gives me the best airflow up the sides between the paint can and the sides of the enchilada can, uh, but it also gives me a good airflow across the uh, bottom of the enchilada can and gives a little bit more clearance between the bottom of the can and the heat shield bottom of the paint. Uh, and here you can see I'm using a standard type of can opener. I've been relinquished to using this cheap can opener because uh, my wife told me I couldn't use her good one anymore. And now that I've opened this enchilada sauce, I need to go and share the good news with my wife that we're having Mexican food tonight. So the next step is to thoroughly wash out the can, uh, rinse it out, and take off the, the label. In this next part of the clip, you're going to see how well uh, that this can actually fits inside that paint lid. Uh, it really pushes in hard, um, and that's going to be fantastic because uh, this is going to be the exact test bed that we're going to be using for optimizing uh, this type of stove. Uh, so um, I won't be going any further other than just building this test bed in this video because I want to do a lot more research on this and um, start making individual cans um, with the different parameters. Probably my starting point on uh, this stove is going to be uh, starting with a 5 to 1 um, and that would be 5 parts primary to 1 part secondary airflow. Uh, and then from there, I might uh, try to uh, change the primary and the secondary air uh, flow a little bit. And the other thing I'm going to try to do is build a uh, throttle for the fresh air intake uh, to allow us to vary between high temperature burn and a low temperature burn. So one for boiling and the other one for simmering. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to work and uh, be able to keep a very efficient burn, but it's something that a lot of people have asked me questions about doing. So again, if anybody has any um, ideas, questions, concerns, just leave them in the comments below. Uh, and if anybody would like to see something different, uh, just make sure you go in the comments and let me know uh, because I'm really trying to revisit this uh, for all the people that have asked a lot of questions and um, want some answers on how to optimize some of these stoves. So uh, please leave comments below, uh, subscribe, and um, thank you for joining me on another installment of Wood Gas Stove Science. Um, and this is part one of the paint can gas stove. Goodbye.